Hi guys, I am Rena Emily with Arkansas Emily. Thank you so much for watching. Today I'm here in Little Rock, Arkansas with Miss Kathy Cummins, everybody. Hi Hello. Kathy. Hi everybody. I am so glad that you're here with us today. And you guys, we actually met at Power Her yes. meeting group. Yes. And shout out yes. to the Power Her ladies. It was amazing. Yes, it was. Yes. And I was just drawn to you and fascinated by you. And as I'm learning, you're just so interesting and giving and loving and compassionate. Thank and you. you just do the things that I really love, <laughs> which is could you please tell us what it is you do and how you can help us? Okay. My name is Kathy Cobbins. My stage name is Kat Marie. I am a poet, an author, um, a speaker, a minister. I am a mother, a wife, a sister, friend. You know, I, I got all the, the normal hats that every woman has. Mm -hmm. um, one of my biggest hearts or biggest joys is helping people discover um, how to get over something or who they are. Looking, for, you mm -hmm. know, solidifying your identity and reaching for your dreams. Yeah. How so, long have you been doing it, though? Um, I was uh, a social worker for a long time with the Department of Human Services and one of the things I did was case management which is something I love to do um, and in doing the case management I found that a lot of people are not sure what they what they are supposed to do That's it. so when you say what type of job you want they might just say I just want a job mm. and it's hard to help someone find just a job because the thing I found in my own personal life is if I work just a job, I'm I'm not going to stay there because I'm not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. It's just something to do and you end up being, say, on autopilot, autopilot and it's so repetitious and it depended on the type of person you are. If you're someone that likes solving problems, if you're someone that likes a challenge, you are you eventually are not going to do your best because you're bored which is something I ran into a lot because I got, I will learn, I will learn quickly. So once I learn it and there's not a constant challenge on the job, I get bored. Yes. And so uh, it's not that my, the quality of my work slips, my attention slips. And so I may show up every day and do the same thing over and over and over again, but I'm miserable. I, and that's yeah. just a person, you know, I, I found that if you're not happy doing something, Eventually, you're going to stop doing it well. Mm, that's right. And so, how did that transition into what you do now, which I assume this is your calling, this is what you're supposed to do, and how did you find it? Well, you find it? It, it's funny, when it, and then it goes back to social work. My dad, who is a social worker, used to tell me all the time, you are a natural social worker. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, then what does that, what does that mean? Um, and so, if I met someone, and they needed help, I would instantly start trying to help them. Not because they could pay me, not because they could do something, but I can look at a person, I can listen to them, and I can tell you, okay, this is what this is what they're needing, this is what they're lacking, this is where the, the need needs to be met. And so I would I would I'll automatically find what was lacking and try to fill that need for that person if they wanted me to. You know, I never went or tried to force my help on anyone mm -hmm. because I also found out that people that ask for help really want the help. And then they'll accept it. And they will accept it. But if you follow, volunteer the help, they'll let you do whatever you want. But that does not necessarily mean that they're going to receive it or they're going to continue to follow up on it or they're going to pursue it. You can, you know, as the old saying goes, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. If the horse is thirsty and you show him where the water is, he's going to be grateful. Yeah. You know, you can feed a person... But if you teach them how to cook and you give them the tools to create their own food, if they are really hungry, they will. Instead of giving them this piece of how to fix it. Right. So, you know, it's, it is a whole philosophy in my life that I learned that, you know, even when I was at my lowest and I had to use, say, public assistance, when I found out what they could do, I would call my caseworker and say, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I got my own self off the system. All I needed was the tools. And when I got the tools, I learned how to work the tools. Some people are looking for the tools, and but they want you to do, use the tools. Other people want to be taught. Other people want to be taught how to use the tools. And so I, I kind of slid into that. As far as poetry, I've been writing it since since I was a child. Yeah. So 
one more thing, Miss Cassie Dice, is poetry. Yes. And you said that you have written a book. Yes, um, my book is called Conversations, a Coffee Table Book, um, and it is my first book of poetry. Uh, you can reach me at on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Uh, my Instagram name is C Marie C, which is C E M A R I E C E. Uh, you can uh, send me a message on Facebook. You can send me a message on Instagram, and we can connect concerning the book if you want. If you want to hear more about me or if you want me to come speak, either one of those ways you can get in touch with me. Yeah. So, so, in a way, you are a coach as well. Yes. Because it sounds like you tell them the tools and you can teach people how to use those tools. Yes. And you can push them into the direction they want to go. Yes. Once a person finds out what their mission is, once they find out once they tap into what they really want, I, you know, it's easier to guide them. But one of the things a lot of people, because of life and situations or environment, whatever the situation, a lot of people just stop dreaming. Because they, they say, I'm too old, or it's going to take too long, or I can't do this. And they, are, they have been boxed in by all the no's and can'ts of life. And so they stop dreaming. And one of the biggest joys that I've had uh, in my life is helping people begin to dream again. You know, when I share my dreams and they're like, yeah, but you this and yeah, I, I was a teen mother. You know, I had five children and I was a single mother. But at, And at the same time, I also thought, about, okay, as a single mother, I need to show my kids that this still can be done. The obstacles don't stop you unless you allow them to. Uh, one of the things they couldn't, my children could were not allowed to say was can't. Wow. You have the ability to do anything because to say I can't means you lack the ability. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my teachers taught uh, when we were in elementary school, she wouldn't allow us to say, can I go to the bathroom? Because she said that's in fear, that's, that's saying that you don't know how to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So we had to, if we said, can I go to the bathroom, she would say, I don't know, can you? <laughs> So we had, the only way we could leave the room was to say, may I go use the bathroom or may I go to the bathroom? Yes, you can. She would not allow us to use the word incorrectly. Growing up, my grandmother, uh, one of my grandmothers, my father's mother was a school teacher. So I was not allowed to use slang or incorrect English. I had to speak a certain way in the house. If I wanted to break up my words or speak it correctly, I had to do it out of her presence. Sounds just like my mom. <laughs> my mother has two master's degrees, and one of them in Russian. And it sounds terrible, but I cannot stand how picky she's about the way I speak. <laughs> in front of her, I might speak the properest Russian ever. And exactly. It is so annoying because I'm like, Mama, like nobody speaks like you. You're like a from another planet. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. That's funny. I've never met anybody who had this in the family. But oh, my mother, and she would correct yes. me all the time. And I do it sometimes. If I hear someone speak and they say use a word wrong, I, I'll do it instantly and I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> I didn't mean to say, I didn't mean to correct you, but it's like in my, it's in, it's in my genetic makeup. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know how to, not to tell you that's wrong. You know, I can't allow you to go out and talk like that in public and people think you have you don't know how to speak English and you are from America. I can't allow that. So I automatically correct. I correct my children. I correct my husband. They don't like it. I correct, not be and not out of hate, not out of um, trying to say I'm better than, better than someone. It's more out of love. Okay, that's not the way you say that word. That's not how you use that word. Because I that's how I was molded. That's how it was trained. When you stand in front of people, they're going to judge you on, on your words. They're going to judge you on how well you speak. They're going to judge you on what you say. Do you know what you're saying? You know, I was even taught, I'm not a big person that, that you know, a lot of people love to cuss. I've never been good at it because I was always told if you use cuss words, that means you have a small vocabulary. So, and so I've shared that uh, a few weeks ago with someone. And it was like, I've never heard that. I was like, that's what I was so growing up. That people that cuss a lot means they don't know enough words. 
that if they don't know how to go throughout an entire day, say at, at work, without cussing, they don't know how else to express themselves. So being a writer, I was also a big an avid reader as a child. I was an avid reader as a teenager. I love to read now. So words are bring me joy. That's how things are expressed. That's how things are explained. And so I revel in words. You know, I, I find I find revenue and I find understanding and revelation in words. Because you can take a simple definition of say the word attitude. A lot of people think attitude means I don't want to, you know, but attitude simply means your thought or your stance on something. A lot of people don't mean, know that that's what that means. So they would use the word attitude in a different way than really what the definition stands for. But that's just what we do in our in our community, in our in our culture in the, in the United States. We take things and we interchange them, and sometimes it confuses people. Um, that's just a power word. Sorry. <laughs> I understand. I totally get it. Um, I love writing as well, and I love the power words where you can take your mind and you can uh, make a change with yes. the words. And yes. a powerful example that I read today, and forgive my ignorance, I'm fairly new to this country. Too still consider myself new. Um, I read today, forgive my ignorance, I already forgot the name, but about the gentleman who started with his three months. And he was a doctor and he started with words, meaning with research. Yes. And he wanted to put uh, what I read today, uh, a black uh, history into the schools, into right. books. Right. And he did the week. And then he did, and then I think they said 1976, uh, it became a month, Black History Month. But think about it, all of it is started with words. He just wanted right. to do these words of amazing right. history, so many accomplishments, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm totally paraphrasing it, but I remember, uh, uh, because it's so complicated, but the point is that if you crown uh, something like, if you crown a black person, for his accomplishment, he, she, whatever, will uh, uh, become productive citizen in the community. So basically, if you celebrate the accomplishment, they'll do it in most of the community. And I'm totally paraphrasing it, but that's what, because it was very, it, wearing yeah. it very hard. Right. Uh, but that's the point that I got. Right. And it's amazing how one person could make so much difference with words. Right. Because the, think about it, it research and that, books we, now the whole history thing, month. right right and it, just history period I believe um, when you think about it, it you, you brought about uh, African uh, American history a lot of our history started with the fact that at first we weren't learn we we weren't allowed to read mm -hmm. but we figured out words anyway you know that was the one thing that as slaves they were not allowed to read but we found out how to read we found out words and even without reading we learned to communicate with words through song through dance I mean, it did not matter words still transcended regardless of the obstacles yeah. they transcend and they last you know the sound that comes out when a person sings or the person talks or when someone shares their story it's not necessarily just the words it's the tone behind the words it's the sound it's the penetration of what that person feels if i share my testimony or if i share my story with someone and it can help them see themselves in a better way or accept themselves then regardless of how my words were said, even if my English was broken, those words can still change them and it can propel them into a better, bigger future. So even though I'm big on speech and uh, punctuation and exclamation marks and all those things, one thing I do know is that there have been times when I've had to change how I speak to reach a person. I can't always use big words when I speak to everyone. I can't always speak proper English. Sometimes I have to use broken English so that they will feel like we're on a, not necessarily equal level, but that I understand where they are. Relatable. Right, so they won't feel like, well, she thinks she's higher, or she's higher than me, so what she says does not relate to me. I have to, you know, sometimes I have to share the fact that my mother was a single mother. So, and that I was a single mother, but, 
at the same time, um, when I raise my children, uh, I have college graduates. Just because I'm a single mother does not mean that there was not a level of expectation. Does not mean that they did not have a standard that they had to live up to. And so you get those words, you get those pictures out there because you see the negative side. And I think it's time that we start sharing the, the, the positive side of life more than we share the negative. Because if we share that, if I share my story with you, if I share that uh, I've been married and divorced, and I share with that I've had to, I'm a survivor of infidelity in a marriage, or that I've had uh, instances in my life where I felt abused, but I overcame them, and I shared that with you, then you know, okay, well, she's just not this prim and polished. She might look good on that on the outside and know she doesn't look like what she's been through but she's come through it out and she's come out better and you will empower me to do the same exactly and that's a, <laughs> so that's when, the thing when you speak uh what do you like to speak about or you adjust your speech to in any audience where you i adjust to where i'm going i adjust to where i'm going um i'm big on prayer mm -hmm. i like to know what the people need so i pray first i pray all the time and I say, God, you know, I, I ask God, what should I share? And he'll, I know, then he'll give me what I need because, excuse me, you may not need to, you, you may have never been a, a parent. You may never have had a child in your life, but you may have gone through abuse or you may have joblessness. I've been jobless. I'm, 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 I've been uh, homeless. What, what part of me do I need to share? And I try to be as transparent as possible to help that other person. Because at that moment, it's not about me. It. It's not about me uh, being ashamed of what I've come through. It's not about me being scared to, to, to share my truth and how I got over it or how I got up beyond it. Not over it, because there's a, dif there's a difference. You have to get beyond it. Some people can just get over stuff, but still stay stuck in the same place and never grow from it so if I share with you how I grow how I grew and how I learned and I learned that this point and that point and it doesn't necessarily have to be points but when I share that with you like okay those are lessons that she learned what can I learn from where I've been did I miss a point you know and I learned from other people I like hearing other people's testimony because regardless of if I've been through it or not something you say may help me maybe not today but maybe tomorrow yeah. or i might be able to share your story with somebody else and say hey i heard about this lady she did this this and this and i thought about you so let me show you what she told me and when i share that with that person it might help them so we have to as speakers as 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 people uh, we sometimes we don't feel like we always reach the people we're, we're connected to or right there in front of us. But what I say on this video, it may not reach someone that's, on, that's listening or watching right now, but someone may replay it and say, wow, I needed to hear that. I needed to know that it's not too late. I needed to know that I can still dream regardless to my circumstances or my situation or where I came from. So it, I think that is one of the biggest things that we miss, especially in the South, especially in this day and age. We get, we get so much flack about what's going on, what we don't have, uh, how we are, you know, you got uh, a lot of people that are overweight, you got a lot of people that are poor, you got a lot of people that's this, but we don't hear a lot about people that's out here trying. You don't hear about people that, yeah, that are out, uh, starting businesses that are trying to accomplish things even if it's not on a large nationwide scale even if it's just local it would be wonderful to know every local author yeah. it would be wonderful to know every local speaker it would be wonderful to know um, every local person that's doing something even if it's just in a five block radius you're making a difference in that five block radius that nobody else can make because those five blocks God gave to you. I'm sure God is inspired to do just that. <laughs> yeah.
is awesome. And a little secret, it's in a very, very fresh stages of planning. But Miss Kathy is going to be one of my speakers in April, Hi. which I am so excited. You guys follow this page for more details to come. I want to ask you, why do you think it's important to shop local? I think one of the things that we have to remember that when we shop local is that it's going to circulate. The dollar is going to circulate where you can see it making the, the economy around you better. A lot of times when we go to say, uh, and even though Walmart is a local store, but let you know, if you go to Walmart, they have products that those products are not made in Arkansas. Those products are not made in Little Rock or uh, somewhere where you could go touch and possibly buy it somewhere else. So when you spend that dollar and that dollar goes, it has to go back to that to wherever that product came from. And so it doesn't stay necessarily in the community. But say you go to a local store here and you know that the person in that store is making their own products. So you know that that money is going to stay here. So if you go to a bakery and you know that bakery uh, buys their supplies from the bakery supply store that's right here in Little Rock, that dollar is going to stay in the community longer and allow uh, those families that are connected to that facility or to that job to flourish. And so, you know, keep shopping local helps every Arkansan, not just the person you buy it from. You know, right. I try to make it a habit to um, at least once or twice a month to go eat at a restaurant that I know is only here. You know, that, you know that's a local owned restaurant so that I know that the money is going to stay here. If I'm going out to eat, I'm I'm not always looking to go to the change like Applebee's or Chili's. I'm looking for a restaurant that is local. You know, because I know that the people that are that that are there, they're gonna go right to the same. Then you know they're gonna get the the money just basically gonna stay in our community. Yep, that's so. right. I love the answer. And uh, what would you say to a new business owner? Don't give up, you know, <laughs> don't give up, don't, um, don't be discouraged, but remember whatever plan you write, remember your plan is alive. In other words, know that your plan must be flexible to fit whatever comes your way. Don't ever think that your plan is just a flat plan and it cannot be changed. You know, if that was the case, I wouldn't be sitting here talking. I had uh, plans to do a uh, a bakery yeah. and I did it for a little while I even used it uh, I used to bake on the side when I worked for DHS every Saturday I would get up like at 5 in the morning make cookies and cakes and go to different uh, beauty shops and barber shops and sell them and then and basically I used it like um, second income because remember I, just, I was a single mother so I whatever I made that weekend would uh, either put gas in my tank or get something for my kids or just have cash in my pocket just in case something came up. So understand that your plant has to be a living, breathing entity. In other words, allow it to grow, allow it to change, allow it to mature, allow it to be flexible. Because otherwise, you will all, you you would be disappointed. You know, you'll you'll fall on your face so many times you'll think you're you'll think you're a failure. But you have to fail in order to succeed. Say that again. You really do. You have to fail in order to succeed. Because once you fail, you learn from that failure and you don't know what to do from that point. So that's what I was saying. You're amazing. Ah, thank you. It's, it's amazing, you guys, how you just came up to me and it was literally like a minute interaction. Yes, and it was. And look where we are. And I truly believe that this is your calling. Thank you. You have changed me today. And oh, I cannot well, even, I've done my job then. <laughs> I cannot even imagine how many lives you've changed when it comes Thank to you. working at DHS and raising wonderful children and plus speaking and church. And wow, wow, wow. I'm so honored that Thank you even took the time to talk to me and you even go to speak at my event. Like, I cannot wait to hear more. And I just want to thank you so much for using your gifts. 
to change people's lives because I can tell you're doing so well and I thank, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart to do it because you could have given up from what I hear you could have <laughs> given up as well I and, have reasons but and, that and is. look at you strong and able and using your story and you need to help us others so that's very honorable so thank you thank you I thank God for that I appreciate that I really do can we have yes <laughs> thank you you're welcome bye guys bye